society and colonialism. Take a quick look around your school and home and identify all the things that come from forests. The paper in the book you are reading. Desks and tables. Doors and windows. The dyes that color your clothes. Spices in your food. The cellophane wrapper of your toffee. Tendu leaf in beeries. Gum. Honey. Coffee. Tea. And rubber. Do not miss out on the oil in chocolates, which comes from salt seeds, the tannin used to convert skins and hides into leather, or the herbs and roots used for medicinal purposes. Yes, they all come from forests. Where else did you think they came from? Forests also provide bamboo, wood for fuel, grass, Charcoal, packaging, fruits, flowers, animals, birds, and many other things. In the Amazon forests or in the Western Ghats, it is possible to find as many as 500 different plant species in one forest patch. But what's happening now? Well, a lot of this diversity is fast disappearing. Between 1700 and 1995, the period of industrialization, 13.9 million square kilometers of forest or 9.3% of the world's total area were cleared for industrial uses, cultivation, pastures and fuel wood. Why deforestation? The disappearance of forests is referred to as deforestation. Deforestation is not a recent problem. The process began many centuries ago, but under colonial rule, it became more systematic and extensive. So let us look at some of the causes of deforestation in India, shall we? Land to be improved. In the year 1600, approximately one-sixth of India's land mass was under cultivation. Now that figure has gone up to about half. As population increased, over the centuries and the demand for food went up. Peasants extended the boundaries of cultivation, clearing forests and breaking new land. In the colonial period, cultivation expanded rapidly for a variety of reasons. Well, first, the British directly encouraged the production of commercial crops like jute, sugar, wheat and cotton. The demand for these crops increased in 19th century Europe, where food grains were needed to feed the growing urban population and raw materials were required for industrial production. Second, in the early 19th century, the colonial state thought that forests were unproductive. They were considered to be wilderness that had to be brought under cultivation so that the land could yield agricultural products and revenue and enhance the income of the state. So, between 1880 and 1920, Cultivated area rose by 6.7 million hectares. We always see the expansion of cultivation as a sign of progress. But we should not forget that for land to be brought under the plough, 
forests have to be cleared. अगर आप अपने सिलेबस के सारे चैप्टर्स इस फॉर्मेट में देखना चाहते हैं तो हमें डिस्क्रिप्शन में दिए गए नंबर पर कॉल करें सोर्स ए The idea that uncultivated land has to be taken over and improved was popular with colonizers everywhere in the world. It was an argument that justified conquest. In 1896, the American writer Richard Harding wrote on the Honduras in Central America. There is no more interesting question of the present day than that of what is to be done with the world's land which is lying unimproved whether it shall go to the great power that is willing to turn it to account or remain with its original owner who fails to understand its value the central americans are like a gang of semi barbarians with a beautifully furnished house of which they can understand neither its possibilities of comfort nor its use 3 years later the american owned united fruit company was founded and grew bananas on an industrial scale in central america the company acquired such power over the governments of these countries that they came to be known as banana republics sleepers on the tracks by the early 19th century oak forests in england were disappearing this created a problem of timber supply for the royal navy now how could english ships be built without a regular supply of strong and durable timber How could imperial power be protected and maintained without ships? So, by the 1820s, search parties were sent to explore the forest resources of India. Within a decade, trees were being felled on a massive scale and a vast quantities of timber were being exported from India. अगर आप अपने सिलेबस के सारे चैप्टर्स इस फॉर्मेट में देखना चाहते हैं तो हमें डिस्क्रिप्शन में दिए गए नंबर पर कॉल करें द स्प्रेड ऑफ रेलवे फ्रॉम दिन फिफ्टीज क्रिएटेड अ न्यू डिमांड रेलवे फॉर इसेंशियल फॉर कलोनियल ट्रेड एंड फॉर द मूवमेंट ऑफ इंपीरियल ट्रूप्स टू रन लोकोमोटिव वुड वॉज नीडेड एस फ्यूल and to lay railway lines sleepers were essential to hold the tracks together each mile of railway track required between 1760 and 2000 sleepers from the 1860s the railway network expanded rapidly by 1890 About twenty-five thousand five hundred kilometers of track had been laid. In nineteen forty-six, the length of the tracks had increased to over seven lakhs sixty-five thousand kilometers. As the railway tracks spread through India, a larger and larger number of trees were felled. as early as the 1850s in the madras presidency alone 35000 trees were being cut annually for sleepers the government gave out contracts to individuals to supply the required quantities these contractors began cutting trees indiscriminately forests around the railway tracks fast started disappearing this is all quite foolish and rather sad what do you think agar aap apne syllabus ke sare chapters is format mein dekhna chahte hain to hame description mein diye gaye number par call kare aise hi aur educational videos dekhne ke liye hamare channel home revise ko subscribe kare